Welcome to Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. My name is Julie and I'm here to impart some knowledge to you today via a two minute art tip. And today's tip comes as a result of a viewer question. Thank you very much for your questions. The question was, can you explain how binder works with dry pigment? Yes, I can. Basically, all paint is a suspension. So a mixture of two things. The pigment, which imparts the color, and the binder, which basically works as a vehicle to cause that pigment to stick to whatever surface that you're applying it to. So in any given media, whether it's watercolor or oil or acrylic or whatever, the binder changes. That is what defines each different media. What binder are they using to adhere to the surface? The pigments are very much the same. There's little or no variation whatsoever. So today I'm going to show you um, a little bit about how this works. So we have a little bit of dry pigment here. We have ultramarine blue, which is non-toxic, so we don't have to worry about that. It does say wear gloves and a respirator, but um, you're not going to be able to hear me if I do that. So we're going to actually just put a little bit of dry pigment out here on our palette. This is a posh glass palette. I love mine very much. I use it all the time. And so we're not going to be making a, a bunch, but what we're going to do is use our palette knife and break up these little little teeny chunks that have happened because of a little bit of moisture. Okay. Now, now class, what you need to know is that for any given media, the binder is what defines that particular media. So for acrylic, that is acrylic polymer, or it's basically an active plastic. For heavy body or a thicker, more kind of impasto style um, paint, the acrylic polymer comes in a very, very thick, viscous state. Now, there's nothing complicated about this. This is a extra heavy gel gloss, but basically all we're doing is we're gonna take some of this. This is gonna act as our binder and we're going to take some pigment and we're gonna mix it right on in there. It's not super complicated in this kind of thing, but um, I will tell you that mixing your own paint from scratch is something that takes a lot of painstaking practice and dedication to the process. That's why so many people leave it to the manufacturers to do that hard work uh, for them. Um, but as you can see right here, we are mixing our pigment very, very nicely, I might say, um, with this heavy gel. Now, we are going to put this on some paper. Yes, we are. So we're going to take this and we're going to apply it. You can see we got excellent little drawdown and we got ourselves a nice little peak there in the corner. Look how cute. Um, so an excellent little drawdown off that just like a little, 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 little teeny bit. All right, so now what is the deal when we're talking about <coughs> like a fluid acrylic. Um, the deal is that you basically are using an acrylic polymer that is, <laughs> should we just start that over. Basically, we're talking about an acrylic polymer that's in a fluid state. So for fluid acrylic, you basically have the same basic structure of a, you know, wet plastic, um, but this one comes in a fluid. This one is GAC 900, and the great thing about Golden that I really, really like is that they provide the public with all of the same tools that they use to create their paint, so you can do any kind of manipulation under the sun that you want. So you want to create some fluid acrylic? <gasps> We're going to do it right now. 
So uh, GAC 900 comes in this really, really fluid state. It looks like milk, right? Um, now, they also have all the way down to like GAC 100, and GAC means golden acrylic compound. So that's just like the basic compound that they're using to create the paint uh, in their own factory. So we're going to take some pigment here. Wee-hoo! feel like Bill Nye. So we're going to actually like mix this on up with the fluid acrylic compound. We need to make sure that we get all the little grainy bits out of there. But our pigment is, as you can see, very intense. A very small bit goes a long, long way. And how much you force into uh, this suspension is totally up to you, however you like it, whatever floats your boat. Now we're going to show you, dip this and we're going to wet our brush a little bit with some water, pick up some of our fluid acrylic that we just made, and we are going to make some cool stuff. So you can see, probably we'd like to put a little bit more pigment in there, it's a little on the washy side, but um, really, really easy to see how that comes about. All right, now, talk a little bit about acrylic. So the same formula would ap apply if we were talking about oil, which the binder for that is like linseed oil. Um, what we are also gonna talk a little bit about gum arabic. Gum arabic, if you're not familiar, is basically like a tree sap, like a resin. Not like resin for pouring, uh, that's a plastic. We're talking about from a tree, like maple syrup kind of. We actually have some American Journey gum arabic here. In this format, it's generally used as an additive to increase the flow of your washes and stuff like this, but it's basically the same um, binder that they use in watercolor. So we put a little teeny bit of gum arabic here on our palette, and we're going to grab up some more pigment here. We're going to make ourselves some watercolor, folks. I'm going to mix all this in. Woohoo! Look at that. That's pretty. Get that all mixed in. Now, like we said, the basic binder, there are some exceptions, you know, like you've heard of um, like brands like M. Graham and stuff that have honey as their binder. That's also a viable option too. You can also use gum arabic when you're making pastels. So it's basically less binder and pure pigment that they use to create pastels. Uh, so here we are with our little watercolor mixture. You can see that we got a lot of power punch in just that little teeny bit. Pretty cool. So, it's kind of interesting. So just a little bit of the basic <laughs> kindergarten style chemistry version of, um, of what binders do with, with dry pigment and stuff like that. But that is basically how paint is created. Um, like we said, the various binders define which media we're talking about. And we thank you guys for your, your questions and appreciate you sending us your questions and your comments. Um, we always uh, enjoy hearing from you. So, and we hope that this was useful and educational. Maybe you learned something a little bit here and also that you enjoy. Mm -hmm.